So, you've been looking to do some autofocusing with your SV Boney MK127, but you come to find out that there's no bracket, no bolt-on, you know, scenario for this to work with offered by SV Boney for right now. So, you want to be able to do some autofocusing, especially for this time of year where it is very cold at night, and the one thing you don't want to do in the middle of the night is get up, go out in the cold when it's zero degrees, and, you know, refocus your telescope to a star, and then have to go right back inside. Wow, what have I told you? I do have a little bit of a solution, a very cheap solution for now, to get your MK127 to do autofocusing for things that are just about $15. So join me, as we're going to be modifying the MK127 to do autofocusing Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Ash Photography. And still, I have the SV Boney MK127 in my possession. Big thank you to SV Boney for still letting me, you know, continuing to try this out. One thing that I have noticed and one thing that I have struggled with because I've been so used to using an automatic focuser for doing ash photography and having to go back to doing manual focus with a batten off mask and you know at some points in the night I have to go back outside when it's you know very cold out especially it's winter here in the northern hemisphere to have to refocus again so it would be kind of nice to be able to actually you know do this automatically since I do have EAFs in my possession but the biggest problem is right now there is no EAF bracket that is specifically made for this telescope right now. So I had to put my thinking cap on of what I could do temporarily before, you know, a little bit later on down the line, they will probably have one that is made for this, especially for a product that SP Boney is likely coming out with. If you've seen some hints about their own version EAF, I'm sure they're going to have some solutions for this, you know, sometime in the future when we don't know as of yet, but I wanted to figure up a very easy solution to be able to use my current EAF to work with this telescope. And for two little pieces that you can find on Amazon, well, you can actually have an entire system working fairly cheaply until we have, you know, one that is specifically made for this. So. We're going to be going through of how I figured out how to do an EAF setup for this telescope. And it's actually much simpler than you think. So for this project, you do need a couple of things. For one, you do need an EAF of some sort. This is the ZWO's version of the EAF. I have a couple of these that I kind of switch around between my telescopes because I'm usually running like two rigs at a time. But you also need the bracket aspect for this since you will be needing to do a little bit of some modifications to this. Very minor though. You also need an adapter to go on to the front of your EAF. This is a pulley adapter that fits right over top of the... Uh, the motor here on the EAF, so you'll be able to use what is known as a timing belt. A simple timing belt like this. This one specifically is a 76XL, which you can find these for about five or six dollars on Amazon. You can also find these pulley uh, adapters here very cheaply at Amazon, about five or six dollars as well. You will also need some. Allen keys, because you're going to need to be able to bolt this on, and you just have to do some simple modifications to this. So we're going to go step by step, and I'm going to show you how easily this is to set up, and it works great. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be working on is the bracket itself. So when you get your EAF from ZWO like this, this is what the bracket looks like. You know, it has an adapter here, holes open to attach to EAF2. But you also have this plate here so you can put screws into. But one thing I found out is if you are just using it as is when putting it into this bracket, you know, yeah, it does fit on there. But the problem is you have this bracket in the way that is sticking up. That's going to be a problem because 
that's going to get in the way of, you know, the spindle portion of where the motor is on the EEF. So we need to take this and flip it around. So instead of it facing this way, it will face the opposite way. But if you try and just, you know, flip this whole bracket over, it will not fit in the finder scope bracket on here. It only fits this way. So that's just a simple inconvenience for that. But all you have to do is just take these two bolts right here, take the whole thing and just flip it around. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's also very important you don't drop and lose these little screws like I almost just did. And there we go. Now we got the bracket switched around, so now when we put it here in the focuser, it will now be perfectly where we need it to be. Okay, for the next step, we're going to be grabbing our EAF here, and we're going to be grabbing our pulley, which also has some Allen keys here, and right over the tip of here, you're just going to simply, you know, loosen it up enough so you can get it over top of the spindle just by loosening it. And there we go. Just tighten it right over it. There is a flat spot that is on the EAFs. You want to make sure at least one of the screws is, you know, put right onto there. Tighten it pretty firm and it stays on there pretty easily. Now the next thing we're going to do is attach our EAF to our now modified bracket just like this. So you have to make sure that you are positioning this the correct way. So like this is going to be facing this way, but the bracket is going to be facing underneath of it. So I'm just going to loosely put the bracket on here without fully tightening it so I can get it into a better position of where I would want it, especially when you're trying to put the belt on. So I'm just going to put them on finger tight for now, but still make sure it has, you know, enough wiggle room around so I can do adjustments and to keep it, you know, away from the actual pulley itself. So here you go. This is what it looks like here together. It's not tightened or anything. And then now we're going to be grabbing our pulley and we're going to go ahead and put it over top of here first because it is going to be a little bit more difficult to kind of, you know, put the timing belt on this after you get it onto the back of the focuser. And we're going to focus in a little bit more with that in this next part. Okay, so I have my pulley here. It's going to go right around the back of this and we're going to go ahead and attach it to the stock focusing knob here on the MK127 and then we're going to go ahead and tighten everything down. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and slide our EF into place. I'm going to go ahead and put my timing belt right on and then we're going to slip it over the larger knob here but you will have to stretch it out just a little bit so it fits right over the top and uh, the back side there we go there we go we have that in place here is a bit of a better angle of where we're going to be setting this up I like to get it so it's kind of you know straight on not have any sort of tilt and then what you can do is you can tighten this right here and it will keep it in place. So now we'll take our other our other Allen key here and then we're going to do some tightening here of the bracket. So we'll go ahead and tighten these right up. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's all fully set up. You have your finder scope bracket here that is holding up by the screw. And as you can see, it's not moving anywhere. You got to make sure you have some decent tension here on the belt itself. 
You have the EEF that is held on by the bracket here, which you can make adjustments, you know, to kind of make it seem like it's, you know, tighter, looser, and all that kind of stuff in case you're having a little bit of some slippage. But all in all, I mean, for a $15 solution, this looks pretty solid here. So the real test is going to be when we use this under the night sky, how does it help with the autofocus routine and see if we get that nice curve that we are looking for when we are autofocusing for the night and let it do its thing and not have to worry about freezing our butts off going outside to refocus in the middle of the night. Okay, so I have the EAF powered on and I'm just going to be using my remote that I got with my EAF for this so I don't have to go into software to actually show you but we're going to look a little bit closer and I can use these up and down arrows to move my EAF you know which direction that I want to but we're going to watch and see that if this motor can actually twist the focusing knob on here without ease without binding up or slipping so fingers crossed let's see if it works. Now really there's no easy way to try and film this but with my remote here we're going to go in one direction. As you can see it is moving perfectly fine. Moving back in the other direction looks pretty good and that's on the fast motion. This is slow so we can also do some very you know fine tuning of your focus by heading in that one direction. Heading back in this direction. There is some small backlash, but that's not too bad. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, fret over it too much, but everything looks great for this. So, awesome. Now, we just need to wait for some clear skies so I can actually try this under the stars and make sure everything's okay. All right, so luckily we have some clear skies that I'm going to be able to test this live. And I'm currently imaging the Tadpoles Nebula, which I'm switching between my uh, two dual narrowband filters. And this uh, filter is about to end here, so it's going to force it into a uh, autofocus routine because it's going to be switching filters back to my L Ultimate. So we're going to go ahead and watch this. And I had to mess with a little bit of the... Um, the settings when it came to, you know, the step sizes for this, I had to kind of bump it up. It seemed like it was a little bit too low at first, so it wasn't really uh, like seeing much differences in the HFR. But we're going to go ahead and watch this now and as it should flip over after it's done uh, doing a dither at the second. So it's going to pop up with that autofocus routine in just a moment. And here we go. Here is the autofocus routine kicking on as we are switching filters. So we're going to hope that with the adjustments that I made to the course being 200 and the fine tuning at about 100, we're going to see if we get that, you know, nice U shape in the, uh, the focus curve for this. So let's hope, fingers crossed, that we do get that, and being that the seeing is really bad tonight because I'm still dealing with some fairly strong winds, uh, not only here at the surface, gusting to 40 miles an hour, but also up above when we're looking at winds like over 100 miles an hour in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. So, so, so far, it's looking pretty good. I can see it kind of going down. The stars are getting sharper at this point. It will usually do like two runs of this you know, one generalize for this V-curve, and then it will switch over to, you know, the fine-tuning. But we do have uh, that bit of that curve, so that is some good news. Uh, still looks like I might have to adjust more of the steps for this just to get it right, or it could be just the really bad seeing conditions at this point. But autofocus routine is working right now. So it's gauging, you know, what is the best for this. So I'm going to let it do its thing and see what happens. Okay, so it did find a focus for this. Star size is a little bit bigger than I would like, but like I mentioned, the seeing conditions are really bad tonight for these testing purposes. So looks like it did quite okay. So we're going to wait for another exposure 
to see, you know, how the stars look in the center. All right, so here's the image here. I'm going to do a uh, detect to see what the star sizes are for this. And actually, it's not as bad as what it came up with. Star size is around like 3.7, 3.6. Not too terribly bad. And even as we go over towards the center, I mean, everything looks much better. But definitely, you know, it could be better. I'll have to mess with my step sizes a little bit more. I have to be a little bit more aggressive with it, I think. But all in all, it definitely beats not having to go outside where it's uh, 18 degrees right now and the wind's blowing 40 miles an hour just to do... A, uh, a manual focus again on switching filters every single hour on this. So definitely beats that by a landslide. So after a few attempts of changing up the step sizes for, you know, the EAF, got some pretty good results. And I think this little $15 solution is going to work pretty darn well for now until SP Boney comes out with their own EAF here sometime in 2026 and also have potentially a hookup that is specifically made for the MK127. Also, I want you to enjoy this image of the Tadpoles Nebula that I've taken with this telescope here at the end of this video. So if you like, you know, this solution and you want to try it out yourself, I'll leave some links down below of one, where to buy the MK127 for SP Boney, but also the links to the pulley and the timing belt itself straight from Amazon that you can, you know, follow along and have your MK127 fully automated for automatic focus routines for the overnight hours. So I hope this video was very helpful. And uh, again, thanks SV Boney for letting me continue to use this MK127 for this video. And I thought this would be extremely helpful for many others that were struggling with the same problem I have with not being able to use an autofocuser for the setup since one was not natively uh, made for this as of yes so leave a like comment subscribe if you tried this yourself and tell me how it went or if there's any other modifications that you think i missed please let me know down below and as always clear skies and i'll see you in the next video cheers